Hey there, it's Cold Cabana. Thank you so much for checking out the past shows from the archives of the art of wrestling. There have been some ads that have been placed throughout the episode, but if you want to listen to every single episode ever done dating back to 2010, ad free with zero ads, it's only $4 a month on my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Cold Cabana. All right, enjoy the show. This is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Cold Cabana. All right, how you doing? Come on in, sit down, relax. You're about to listen to The Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast, it's a personal journal, it's an entryway into the minds, the souls, the hearts, and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Cole Cabana. Uh, I'm a podcaster, I'm a Twitch streamer, I'm a D&D player, something I never thought I would ever say in my life. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler, and I am coming to you live from my studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before I go any further, this is a fan support and listen to support a podcast. It's supported by people just like you. Give it to you free of charge every other Thursday for this season. ColtCabana.com, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, however you get your podcast. A couple great ways that you can support. Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend. Tweet it out. Uh, the best way that you can support. ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com. I send and ship everything from my own apartment. Also, Patreon.com slash ColtCabana, where for only $4 a month, you can listen to over 10 years of past our archives absolutely ad free for an extra dollar on that i've got videos special segments acting gigs talking to my friends about wrestling and so much more and then for an extra five on top of that i'll give you a shout out at the end of this podcast and i'll send you a monthly collector's aow selfie style photo pin this month me and jamie dundee from episode 120 back in 2012 one of my favorite episodes ever i did it in his very own house what a character Jamie Dundee is. Speaking of characters, the perfect segue. Perfect segue. I almost the embodiment of Jamie Dundee in 2020. Also, why has Jamie Dundee not been on Joey Janela's spring break? That is something I'm unsure of. Brett Lauderdale, Jamie Dundee is the perfect man for you to resurrect his career. And that's right, Joey Janela is on the show this week. He is the guest. He is in the perfect spirit of Jamie Dundee. He would have been easily the third member of PG-13. I believe, rest in peace, Animal and Hawk would have probably powerbombed the fuck out of him at WrestleMania 13 while I was there if Joey Janela was around in a starter jacket with a backwards Raider cap. That's just a vision I could easily see happening, and I'm sure you can too. Joey Janela is a star. On AEW, tagging along with Sonny Kiss, also doing his own thing. He is on national television. His story will be told. His story has been told, but today we get a little deeper into it. It's a one-on-one conversation. It's long form. It was done after COVID testing. Joey Janela, a true character in the world of wrestling, gave up cigarette smoking. I wanted him to smoke a cig the whole time. He gave it up. Good for him. Maybe I sh- Maybe he doesn't want me to expose that. I'm sure he's vaping now. Janelle is vaping for sure, right? Yeah, for sure. I keep on saying I'm going to talk about COVID, COVID protocols, how it's affected my life. In the middle of the pandemic on my Patreon, I did like a talk into the microphone monologue podcast where I described how I was affected by the pandemic, by COVID, by everything. And I guess I can give like a mini recap, and we are a little bit later. So many curveballs have been thrown in to everyone. And the grand scheme of things, I'm fine. I've got some savings. I've got a job. I'm healthy enough. Sure, I got a little asthma, but I I don't think that'll take me out. Maybe it could if I got it. In terms of the smaller scene... I think my wrestling has taken a a tad of a hit. You know, I was just starting to move forward. My last match was this really fun match. You could watch it on YouTube. It was myself and Peter Avalon in Utah. I'd never been to Utah. The crowd for Utah in this match on Dark was going crazy for me. I felt this real connection to the fans and something that I have lived off of for years is a true connection to the wrestling fan. And I felt the momentum going And then we shut down. And then when we wrestle in front of nobody, there are no fans. And I'm not really the wrestler 
who thrives in front of no fans. Maybe John Moxley in his style is. So a perfect time for John Moxley to be the AEW champion. But for me, put me on ice. Put me on ice big time. And so if that's the worst of my worries, it's fine. A little bit of me worries that is this how wrestling is going to be for the next five years? And then my golden years of professional wrestling have been stripped away from me. I worry a little bit about that. But then I see Chris Jericho at 50 years old on the very top of the national promotion. 30 years of Jericho happened on AEW. Gives me a little more uh, sunlight at the end of the tunnel where the rainbow is. I tried to throw some kind of expression in there. I don't know if it worked. Seems like you'll probably get the idea. So my worries are minimal. I do fear for the independent wrestler. I had the quarantine series. I fear for those wrestlers, the Effies, the War Horses, some of my new favorites that I watched while watching uh, Spring Break, the Tankmans, the Rodericks, and a handful of others that really shined in that big collective show. But all I can do is wear a mask I'm going to try to do some independent shows within a drive of me. I will be wearing my mask. I will try to keep my distance, not only from the fans, but also the wrestlers. And that's it. That's it. I, I can all I please wear your mask. Wear it over your nose. Even if it's even if you don't believe it, uh, just know others do. That's it. Vote. Have I hit all the political issues? Wear a mask. Vote and watch some wrestling, especially on AEW. All right. Here you go. Listen to him and I talk from a Hyatt Regency in Jacksonville, Florida. Why don't you describe your outfit so, for, before we start here? Uh, got some ECW shorts on from mm-hmm. Chalkline. I got this shirt I bought off an ad on Instagram. Very nice. It's got like a skeleton on it and some paint splatter and shit. I'm going to recommend you put that uh, cell phone on silent. Oh, yeah. And what's your hat? Um, I think it's like a... A Japanese uh, roll. A little Japanese uh, writing and a little red rose. Okay. Uh, you just went to Japan, did you not? Well, just no, not. that was August. That was August, not just to I mean, in the, yeah. in the hindsight of your whole career, close enough, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It is recent enough. Was that, was that a thrilling uh, thing oh. for you? Oh, it was thrilling. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. It was, uh, it was, I think we were there for like eight days, me and the GCW crew. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I got I got alcohol poisoning. Man. Did you? Yeah. I mean, that, you know what's that little what's that little area with all the little bars? Rapungi? No, not Rapungi. That's like the club area. Oh, that's all. I know. Uh, Sh- Shin- Shinjuku. Is it Shinjuku? Sure. Yeah, with the little alleyways with the little mm-hmm. bars for like five people. Did you have people? Did you have people taking you around? Uh, let me think. Oh, Drew Parker, kind of. Okay. Yeah. He knew to take you around? Yeah, he lives there now. Okay. <laughs> so he took us to the spots. All right. And besides that, I think we were pretty good. Yeah. And that was for GCW slash... It was just GCW, and then there were some Freedom shows. With, I thought it was with Freedoms together. Um. Th- yeah, yeah, I think so. So, I mean, Joey, I know that you're such... And you're. it's been said by yourself, like... Uh, a mark for professional wrestling. Oh yes, right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so the I'm wearing ECW shorts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <right> now. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea of going to Japan and doing and and years of watching these people go to Japan, right? Does that not is that did it hit you like that? Yeah, I wrestled Sasuke in Japan, so that's kind of like a, you know, what, what, growing up watching Great Sasuke, it was like one of my favorites. Um, to wrestle him in the United States and in Japan was. That's an achievement. Mm-hmm. If this was an Xbox game, it would say achievement unlocked. Right, but also, all, I mean, again, all all the magazines you've ever seen. Yes, all the you know the the guys coming back with the Rivera jackets. I got a Rivera jacket. Yeah, surprisingly, it's it's. I think it's like a three XL, but I got it. So right, which happens to fit. I mean, these six XLs fit me as an extra. Yeah, one, they so. they they didn't have any Rivera jackets there, but. Uh, one of the, somebody said to them, they're like, oh, uh, Joey Janela wrestled John Moxley on pay-per-view in the uh, United States. And they were like, oh, I guess he's <laughs> yeah, more notable than Jimmy Lloyd. <laughs> they're like, they said, uh, we're going to go talk to the boss. Apparently some guy dropped off a jacket in like, okay. the back alley, and they gave it to me. Nice. So I did it. Yeah. Very, and, of course, Jimmy Lloyd got these Zubaz pants probably, right? Yeah, no, he got a jacket too. Okay. I think he has two Rivera jackets now, to be honest. Uh, this is the same Jimmy Lloyd who I was doing my cut my promo 
YouTube show and they were like, oh, use this little kid. Use this trainee. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. Next thing you know, he's going to Japan and getting two Ribera jackets? That's it. He's uh, in Japan. Uh, Chris Dickinson says he's a Japanese. He's he's a heartthrob in Japan. Is, is that right? Well, he's not one in America. Yeah, the girls just go, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> like, apparently him and Dickinson went on a date with a few girls at a some kind of restaurant. Okay. And all they were going, Jimmy, Jimmy. And they, they post pictures of him on the... Twitter with like hearts all over his mm-hmm. face and those, you know, anime a- eyes. Yeah, the Japanese filters. way, like like fourteen year old girls do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think every everyone does that. There's like photo boots, but that's what uh, that's Jimmy's a heartthrob over there. All right, and you you not so much. Uh no, I wasn't. I don't think I was really that over there. <laughs> <laughs> not Compared, for lack of trying. No, I think I think the weird thing is Schlack was fucking. He's like got over there. And uh, G Raver, I mm. guess just the way these guys looked, and mm-hmm. there's not too many guys over there walking around with tattoos, so unless they're in Yakuza and stuff, so it's just appealing. Okay, what would you do? What would you do differently? Get you some get, tattoos. You get some tattoos. Hey, you're not tatted up. Why is that? I don't know. I always wanted tattoos, and then I just bitch out. You have zero tattoos. I have none. But you do. You do bitch out. No, I never bitched out and said, "Oh, I'm going to get a tattoo this week," and. Didn't get any tattoos. It's just like, I want tattoos, but then I just never get them. All right. So I'm just like, I don't know, plain skin. Plain skin man. That's it. Everybody's crazy about a plain skin man. It's a great song. <laughs> All right, let's talk about you growing up, Jersey boy. Yep. Well, where, where in Jersey? Uh, Monmouth County. Okay. It's like kind of like the start of this shore. Okay. Area. And you, and uh, go on. Uh, about 25 minutes from uh, Asbury Park. All right. Uh, loved wrestling since you were a kid. Oh, absolutely. Any brothers or sisters? Uh, I have a brother and I have a sister. She's 27 now, I think, or 28. Uh, my brother is 22, I believe. Do they share the love of professional wrestling like you do? Um, no. No. No, I think my brother, he got back into it. He's more of an MMA guy. He was into it when he was a kid, and now he dates a girl that he got from my clout, per se. Is that right? Yeah, I think he went on a dating app and uh, saw some girl. She was a wrestling fan and said, oh, my brother uh, is Joey Janela. <laughs> and then now they're dating. And her Twitter, I said, that now she follows me on Twitter. It's all AEW <laughs> is posts. It, is it weird when you co- go home for uh, for a dinner and she's there? No, she's asking she knows, for an she autograph? She didn't really bother me. No, okay. I met her a couple times. She never really bothered me. Okay, good. And he tries a kayfabe that he likes wrestling. He knows what's going on. Right, right. He tries a kayfabe it. She'll be at Thanksgiving dinner pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, probably. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm all basing this off of a documentary I once saw about you. It's mom. Is there a dad? Uh, he passed away. Okay. When I was a kid. That's right. Not when I was a kid. I think I was 12. Um, yeah, my mom. Uh, she's around. Right. Yeah. Did she like wrestling? Uh, she actually, uh, she managed me a couple times. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, there was this, uh, the place I started, uh, the promoter tried to put a rib on me once, and as soon as I walked through the curtain, he had my mom stand right in front of the curtain. That's cute. He gave me a hug and yeah. embarrassed me right. in front of the whole crowd. And you went with it? No, I didn't go with it. He said, Mom, you're now you're you're in this all, all the way through now? Yeah, so he, so he was like, uh, so then... Uh, Who's this promoter? Uh, Depper Johnny Falco. Okay. You may have seen him in some documentaries. I remember in his basement making phone calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cutting uh, wrestling, tickets. wrestling. Yeah, cutting tickets. Yeah, one of the carniest guys of uh, in the history of wrestling. He took the reins of uh, Dennis Carluzzo's NWA jersey, which turned into NWS is where I got my start. And uh, I don't know how things could have got carnier from Carluzzo and NWA jersey, but they did. But he, he uh, decided, oh, the next show we have in the area is the night before Mother's Day. How about we have your mother come out and have a Mother's Day street fight? So she came out. She uh, she managed me. And then uh, halfway through the match, I had her hold my opponent. And I had him duck out of the way. And I smashed her in the head as oh, hard no. as I could with a trash can <laughs> lid. And then uh, I, I then at the end of the match, she she was mad. And she turned on me. It cost me the match. Hold on. I, I, obviously, you're, that's the, the, the storyline of this. But did... Did you really hit your mom? Oh yeah, I laid it in. <laughs> did she? Did you tell her to put her hands up? No, she took a straight. Um, was trash she, can was to she head. okay? 
Yeah, she said it hurt a little bit, but I did bent the thing over her head. Was that years of aggression to get out? Probably. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She had she had to see she had to uh, you know experience it. She's not in the business, brother. I had to yeah, right. Show her that things are a little bit real here. Would you? <laughs> if she wants to be a part of it, <laughs> um, was your dad? Did your dad like get involved with wrestling before he passed? Yeah, yeah, he was a wrestling fan. Uh, he, uh, I made him put an Austin three sixteen. Um, bumper sticker on his work van mm. and uh, for some reason uh, he lost his hair I think like in his 20s Okay. so like from when I was born he wore this I don't know why he had this shitty ass hair piece I don't know it was just uh, your dad wore a, wig, a, a no, rug for, for a tube I guess he was just ashamed he had no ha- hair but like that was like maybe from I was born in 89 so probably till 1997 Mm-hmm. And then the bald heads came in, and he shaved it. He took it off, and he was a bald man now. He travolted it. Yeah, people. Were, I brought him at a class trip once. People were saying, "Your dad looks like Perry Saturn." <laughs> That's what people were saying. Is he jacked? No, nah, he wasn't really jacked. Uh, but yeah, he, had, he, he was tan as fuck. That's probably why. Um, okay, so you're obviously uh, a bit of a wild card. Is that a good? Uh what would be a good analogy for you? Wild card. A wild card. A wild card. Do you, yeah. do you does that come from uh, your father passing at an early age? Have you have you broke it down yet? I think I just I don't know. Um, I just fuck up, I guess. Were you a fuck up pre father passing? Oh, away? of course, bad. Bad. Yeah, it was like uh, schools and teachers and always anti authority. Always anti authority. Uh, never. Uh, you know, doing good in school and mm-hmm. just being a little piece of shit. <laughs> but, but yeah, after my dad passed, it's still, it's like, now there's absolutely no control. So things just progressively got worse. Mm-hmm. And then wrestling came along, and I guess that kind of saved me. Didn't do like, uh, I didn't fuck around too much with like drugs and shit or doing like, I wasn't fucking robbing banks or anything, but. Uh, just being a little f- uh, nah, degenerate, fuck. Right, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? The way the way you post and you'll you'll put stuff and like just the other day you were like someone posted a, a results to a show and you're like I was at that show. Yeah, yeah. Um, y- like in my head, you hear those stories of Trent Acid and and Johnny Cashmere doing like backflips at the ECW arena as kids and stuff. Yeah. W- were you were you just going to shows? Were you going to lots of shows? I was going to Carluzzo NWA Jersey shows. Like because, from what age? Probably ninety eight was my first one. How old? Like how old were you? If I eight was, years old. Yeah. I was, okay. So you were one of these little kids. Like me doing independent shows. There's always these little yeah, shitty yeah. kids oh, around. Yeah, yeah, I was like one of those. Like Grado was that? Like I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't like that. Like too like until I got my teens. Yeah. And wrestlers started like you know. You would see me like, oh, I remember that piece of shit when he was a fan. <laughs> so you would go to these, like, constantly going to these shows. Like, the yeah, I went to a lot shows. of the. Yeah, I went to a lot of the. And what? How would you know about it? your your dad? Takes you to him, or yeah, he took. A, and then when he died, I got like randoms to take me, <laughs> just out of like, like my uncle and shit. Okay, yeah, and how? And you were on the internet at a young age, finding out where these shows were. Um, yeah, kind of. I didn't have a, a internet or a computer until I was in my early teens. So I'd go to the library and, uh, you know, I would uh, go on all the dirt sheets and stuff and look at um, look at half naked pictures of uh, Terry Runnels and right. fucking <laughs> and fucking Sable. Yeah. Until one time, I actually the librarian caught me and uh, couldn't exit out, and there was Sable pictures all over the library. So they said they couldn't. I couldn't go on that anymore. Oh, how are you going to find out where the wrestling was? No, but I was allowed. I wasn't allowed to just look at half-naked pictures oh, okay. of girls anymore. I was still able to go to Stick Death and all that shit. So What is it? StickDeath.com. Remember I don't remember site? that one, no. Yeah, maybe you're... It was, Stick Death? It was a good one. No. That was my favorite website. DVDVR, I remember that one. It was like stick figures killing each other. Oh, I videos. thought it was a wrestling dirt sheet. No, I would, that's what I would... It would be... I would uh, alter my time between wrestling dirt sheets and uh, Stick Death. My my wrestling dirt sheet was Raja's rumors. Yes, of course we all know Raja. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and and so growing up and going to these local Jersey shows, what like who were you seeing? Who was dominating? Who were the old timers that were around? Oh, uh, the, the the one the tweet I shared the other day, 
that I was there at that match because someone, it's just such a bizarre match. It was Virgil versus Big Dick Dudley versus Van Hammer <laughs> in a three way match for the NWA Jersey Hardcore Championship. And that's the night I met Virgil. He was like, uh, I walked up to him. He's like, he, he said, Kid, get me a Diet Pepsi. <laughs> So I got Virgil a Diet Pepsi, and then he let me chill with him the whole time. No shit. Yeah, there's no way he remembers that. So this is this is the weird thing. Okay, this is very weird. So I was, I'd say twelve then or thirteen. About two years later, we walked into a Super Mega Show, the like toy convention, and as soon as we walk in, Virgil's there, and uh, some guy goes, Joey. Joey and my friend's dad goes, this man is calling you over here. And it was fucking Virgil. Jesus. He remembered me. He made an impression. And then we hung out with him there, too. He never, he never really, he, he would harass my friends to buy his. Of course. Eight by tens. He never really, he never really fucked with me, though. He don't remember that now, but that's a true story. I and mean, he was going. So my friend's dad always thought I was just like friends with this fucking yeah. Virgil, dude. Were you, were you, when you were at these shows, was there a sense of like awe? Because you had to have known Van Hammer was on TV and Virgil's on TV. Yeah. Or were you the shitty kid who was like, what? I, like did whatever you want? Yeah, it was cool. They, then they had like the Reckless Utes there and uh, Devin Storms. And, and I'm saying like you're just going up to these guys fucking around with them? Or are you like can't believe that these guys are here? The uh, guys yeah, I was TV. going around fucking. But it was more in my teens. Like when I started going to like uh, Jersey All Pro shows and stuff and mm-hmm. just bullshitting with people like Teddy Hart and shit. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever move up to Canada with Teddy Hart? No, no. He's, he's tried. Okay. He's tried not as much as other people, but I I know the horror stories of people getting trapped there for yeah. months on months. So you're just going to school. You graduate high school. Yep. Uh, but you started this stuff in high school, or are you classic backyarder? Uh, I was a backyarder, and then I got in uh, when I was a junior in high school. That's how. I, that's where I got into business. Okay, doing what with this guy? Yeah, just uh. So uh, you weaseled your way on, right? I weaseled my way in. I just kind of. Start. I knew this guy, Dirtbag Dan. He got me in to set up rings. And how'd you know Dirtbag Dirt Bike Dirt Bike Dan? <laughs> dirt Bike Kid. <laughs> uh, I met him. He was a he was a wrestler. We used to see at the gyms, but we thought his gimmick was that he was a shitty wrestler because he would botch so much. <laughs> so he became like a legend. Like we had to go see you know, Dirtbag Dan's wrestling. Yeah. Also, like, you're yeah. at the gym. What do you mean? You said you you saw, you'd see him at the gyms at like the the high school show oh, okay, at the gotcha. g- uh, gymnasiums, and then uh, one day we seen him at the movie theater. Like Dirtbag Dan, you're a legend. <laughs> yeah, he thought he was hot shit. Of course. Yeah, he's like, well, we're like, we back here at Wrestle and Hazlitt. Uh, would you like to come? And he's like, yeah. And we're like, oh shit. And like we're getting Dirtbag Dan to come. He finally came. We got him. We got him to come, but he never responded to our messages at first. Mm-hmm. Until the day MySpace, I got MySpace. It's the day I started networking, and I, I went on MySpace and I found all the local backyard wrestling groups. Started hitting them up and getting backyard bookings and having interpromotional wars. And Dirtbag Dan was a part of one of those. Uh, While he was on regular shows, yeah, on regular shows, backyarding. And then he got me uh, in the NWS by setting up rings, and I would learn how to bump before and hit the ropes. And- now these guys at NWS did. Did, were they like that's that shitty kid who you, who comes to the shows? Yeah, I think I think a few of them knew me just from coming to the shows, but it was uh, yeah, it was uh, there were shitty shows, <laughs> whatever. And then uh, of course Dapper, he was always like uh, he was such a carny. It's like he don't care if you're trained or not, as long as you can push some tickets, mm-hmm. he'll give you a twenty tickets or thirty. How many can you sell, boy? Or and that's, that's what two thousand four. What is what is that? Uh, 2006 2006 and that's like a picture of that east coast independent scene is that right it was back then yeah it was like so explain to everybody how how it works <laughs> well you had ccw in philly and uh that was, and you had ring of honor kind of in that area as well that was the top one and jersey all pro was coming up and then the rest was just carny bullshit like it would be like untrained guys um You'd have your your uh, cool indie name or someone that could work with the better guys, the you know, like the Trent Acids and the who else was over there? Mike Cruels mm-hmm. and Robbie Echoes was over there and Damian Adams. And then you have those guys and then you would have 
um, the TV name, like the whoever just got released, uh, like uh, Orlando Jordan, or, some <laughs> okay. shit, or the, then there would be like the, you know, the Jim Duggins and the Greg Valentines. That was basically it. And the Tito's, he's a Jersey guy, right? Tito, Tito was there a lot. Yeah, but yeah, that was kind of that. There's like no, not really any good wrestling. It's like now even the the bad wrestling promotions are are all right. I guess some of them. Ish, yeah, I'm sure they're right, out there. Ish, you're, you're yeah. not, you're, you, they're not as bad as they were. But I was gonna say you're in a higher setting now, so maybe you're not seeing those as much as you were back then. Yeah, I wish, but I wish they were still around like that. And, uh, I would go to those shows just to <laughs> piss, piss myself. So the, the so I mean I feel that w- w- we met when you, when you were when you were with uh, PWS. Uh, maybe we met before. I don't know. Uh, no PWS, but like wrestle yeah, stuff. So. And yeah. at that time, you were just kind of still like. Young and hungry, and I, I think you're a Ricky O's guy too. You like at his shows. Yeah, that was after PWS. But I would hear stories of like Ricky being Ricky with you, and uh, what does that mean? I don't know. I heard he, <laughs> I heard he yelled at you downstairs in a basement once. Oh yeah, yeah. He chased me around the locker room <laughs> right. because he showed up to the. Sh- I was his champion, and uh, oh, that that's right. And so he 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 always tells these fucking stories. The most famous one. Is that at one of the J Cups he had uh, Punk, I think Styles, maybe Danielson too. Yeah, me, Styles, Danielson. Were you in there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Sunjay yeah. Dutt was in the basement too. And then he had his, all these. You slept at his house before, Ricky O's? I did, yes. I don't know if you were there for this or if this sto- no, story. No, I slept at Dave Dave's house, Dave Greco. Oh, Dave Greco. Well, this is a story he, he, he tells all the time. He used to tell all the time that. When Sanjay Dutt left his house, that he took all the ice cream out of his freezer, all the ice cream cones, and he made a trail out the door of melted of ice cream cones. They melted all over Riccio's floor. <laughs> so forever, he would just say that was the reason Sanjay Dutt was such a fucking piece of... Like, oh, Sanjay Dutt is the biggest piece of shit that ever slept in my house. He left a trail of ice cream cones out right. the door. Meanwhile, the nicest man in pro wrestling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sanjay so, Dutt. No one knows what if that's true or not, but apparently he left this trail of ice cream cones. So when I did the so when I wrestled Sanjay and I lost to him, I mean, he showed up to the show and had a fucking meltdown and chased me around the locker room and uh said he he wanted to fight Sanjay in the parking lot and stuff yeah. for the ice cream incident of two thousand <laughs> uh, two thousand two. Uh, I feel he's still salty about me for something god knows what uh oh yeah i think he i think you were on his hit list too yes i was yeah i don't know if you left uh, would you leave uh, ice cream melted ice cream? i left my dignity at, yeah. at the door i don't know um but that's where i knew you but from so that was you know that was 2010 maybe so there's four years of just maybe more of of clamoring around that scene for you before right or even longer yeah, I, I was just doing the NWS. The NWS thing is they ran over like 60 shows a year. They ran the most out of any indie, so you would have work right. with and, them. And that guy, that dapper guy, he's, car- <clears throat> he's carny. Yeah. But he's getting he's getting you're working. Yeah. And working you need the work, right? Three, four times. Yeah, I, I developed, like, out of the guys he had, I eventually he realized that I was good enough to, you know, put on every show and you know make the ticket sellers look passable right so and you and you seem to always have a story about these guys like did you say you worked Val- greg valentine or i never worked greg valentine uh, i was I, give me a list of interactions you would have because he was he was bringing in all these stars right he needs someone to draw oh is there a, li- a laundry list oh there's a laundry list or guys one time worked? i smoked weed with paul bearer in a, a ring truck <laughs> And that was, I think I was like 19, and that was surreal. I used to, when I smoked weed a lot when I was a teenager, I used to smoke with Val. We had Val Venus like every show for like six months mm-hmm. before he was some kind of, I don't know, right wing fucking mm-hmm. nut. I watch his YouTube channel now. He yeah. he does First uh, First Amendment audits now, oh. which really excites me. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely lost it, but he was cool back then. Yeah. We, I, used to, I used to hang out with him a lot, and just a weird Tony Atlas is it was always weird get and and of course watching him get his face stepped on in the locker room was always a joy. So you want to take some of us through that? Like uh I mean a lot of people know that but he, he I wasn't in enough locker rooms with Tony Atlas especially on the indies. I wasn't a couple of WWE but he wasn't pulling that shit I don't think. No, I don't think so. I think that was a So he's 
famously known for having a foot fetish, right? Yeah. And so what would he do? He would find a, a girl a, that was in the locker room and ask them, maybe pay them to step on his face. And this is something you saw more than once? Oh, plenty of times. This is not something like... It's like he's not bringing this girl into another room to do this. It's in the locker room. He's laying on the floor with his hands kind of on his belly, hooked like he was at a a corpse at a in a casket. Yeah. And the and uh, girls would just take off their shoes and kind of just stepped on his face like they were crushing grapes to make a <laughs> like Bart Simpson, uh, yeah, in like France. wine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he would just sit there, and you could tell he had the biggest smile on his face, and. Yeah, I've seen it multiple times, and he didn't crazy. even give a shit. I think he was just trying. I don't know why he'd do it in front of us, but we were all taking selfies next to him, yeah. getting his face stepped on. and The idea that there's no shame there. No shame. <laughs> He's just, just a horny man, right. I guess. Um, and then the notoriety kind of comes with all the hardcore stuff, right? Yes. So did you make a, a decision in your life that you would want to start doing that stuff? Uh, I didn't want to do it. I wanted to be a wrestler. I liked doing like uh, gimmick matches and stuff, but I didn't want to do death matches. I was always a fan. That was my favorite stuff to watch as a right. teenager. And me too, by the way. Like I, and I was wrestling IW in Mid South. Oh, so you those, got to see all the good shit. I was just there watching yeah. them do it, right? And I wasn't put in the matches. I got to do the regular <laughs> matches. Yeah, you get. That's like it was just uh, GCW is perfect storm and just and CCW. It was just like all right, you're in CCW now. All right, what, what did I like watching at CCW? Death matches, so did a little bit there, and uh, the big one was Zandig, of course. Everyone knows well, that. Before story. you get into that, hold on. So you you got yourself into CCW? Uh, yeah, I was doing like their Dojo Wars. Like uh, every Wednesday, they would have fr- uh, a show five dollars, and they would have like twenty, thirty fans there. Okay. Sometimes more, and it was every Wednesday, and we wouldn't get paid. I just wanted to be a part of CCW, so I started doing that um, every Wednesday. And uh, so I met Gulak and Tracy Williams, and they kind of helped me. They're like, hey, good. they went DJ. This guy's kind of good. We should, you, got, you need some new guys, some fresh faces here. And, uh, you know, I, I, or, or I was kind of already over with the hardcores of that crowd because I was doing On Point for uh, Matt Tremont, this guy Loudy at that time. And they were just kind of like, I felt like the kind of like the feeder company for CZW. Mm-hmm. So it, it was all the hardcore CZW fans. So when I went to CZW, it was pretty easy. I never really got. Right. And you've been on all those shows for years that they probably all went to also, those fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I never really, I had it easy there. You know, I didn't get booed out of the building or anything. Right. So that's what happened. And then you have your match with Zandig. I know we talked yeah, about on else, some of the yeah. live episodes. Yeah, I think I've, that story is, I've <laughs> talked about it, I think, on everything, I, every interview I've ever done. Right. And, you know what happened. You know, Boom. I'm surprised that people still don't know about that. They hit me up, like, weekly. I can't believe you did this. <laughs> can't believe this happened, but. Well, I feel with AEW, just there's just new fans, right? Like, we're just getting new fans yeah. that we, especially for me, like, I just assumed everyone, not that everyone knew who I was, but I'm blown away. They're like, I just discovered you. It's like, dude, I've been wrestling so long. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have so much new fans now, and uh, it's like, for the last three years, I was such of a, such a loved on the indies. Yeah. I never had to deal with negative, and now all these new fans are like. That's something else, too, isn't it? They, they fuck it. Some people wish death upon they me come upon the, they come out of the woodwork but that was like the charm of me on the independence was I, I was never like we're in a generation of all these athletic fucking uh, machines mm-hmm. like these computer made lab laboratory wrestlers that are just can hit anything in this and then the charm of Joey Janela was that was like Sabu some things right were fucking it came out great and sometimes they don't but because you, you knew he was doing what he was going to do anything and yeah 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 right? yeah so now the new fans are seeing me uh aw and they're like what's up with this guy <laughs> but some people are getting used to it i think i i a couple times i i fans said oh i hated you because cornet told me to hate you but i kind of you know i kind of right. like you now because and we get it because we realize what a maniac yeah, you're, is. <laughs> you're a psychopath <laughs> Yeah, just uh, or anyone that would stand up to him, maybe we appreciate him a little more. <laughs> yeah, just a uh, wild world we're living in right now. Yeah, 
Uh, okay, so death match. Let's go over that really quickly. You fall from a what? Thirty feet? Twenty five feet? Uh, that was fucking high. Fucking high. <laughs> Would you say it was higher than the Kenny than Kenny did? Uh, on the stadium uh, thing. What was that? Thirty feet? Twenty five? I don't know. See, someone told me thirty. Someone told me eighteen. Mine was thirty feet. So I think maybe it was like a little bit higher than that. It's a legit no pads down there. No, it was a the pad was a. A truck, <laughs> right? Uh, as Andy said, "Oh no, it'll break your fall because the the springs in the." And he was right. Really, it was like getting thrown into a wrestling ring. Just the wrestling ring had a barbed wire net in there, and you felt a little bit of a give and bounce as you went down. It, the whole truck bounced, so it it didn't fuck me up in that All aspect. Right. So he's he's smart, so I'm going to say he's that smart, but <laughs> <laughs> smart enough to know that. The, I don't know what they call that. The springs in the. Truck. I know. I'm trying to think of what it's called. I can't think of it either. I, I always think of the suspension or yeah, yeah, or the axle, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That it would bounce like a wrestling ring. Yeah, but like the he's also like the barbed wire in the bottom of the truck will also break your fall because it's. But that was the stupidest thing because you couldn't even see that. Right. He's just. I think he's just sick. But he. I mean, he went in. He essentially is the story. Didn't he just kind of scoop you up and go right? No. He, well, I mean, I'm just, what I was going to say is that he, I mean, he took it all. Yeah, it's because it was the truck was parked closer right. than we thought it was going to be. Right. So he takes it all, but he, I mean, he essentially sat. He like realized the situation, assessed it, and was like, "I'm going to take this, so this kid doesn't." He just went. He heard, yeah, because I would have went through the windshield or I would have went on top of the truck. Right. Which says something about him. I don't yeah. know how close your relationship with him is. Yeah, it was cool. Like I've only talked to him a few times, even after that. Like he did it, and it was like. That was like my pro wrestling Illuminati ceremony, and mm-hmm. here I am, and he went back into obscurity. Yeah, what does he do? He was a foreman of a construct. He might still be, but he broke his back. Like, I think he, I don't know if he still does, but he was walking with a cane for a while. Because of that. that. Yeah, because his back was broken. Unreal. So, I, he, he got a new Facebook now, so. Okay. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of messages. He's a big, uh, you know, a big Trump guy now, so. Oh, no. So he's planning with you? Yeah, he's like, uh, you know, a typical Trump fucking uh, coronavirus yeah, yeah, yeah. T- uh, posts on right. Facebook. <laughs> the fun ones. Yeah, fun ones. <laughs> um, and then that, yeah, we talked, so that's, I mean, it kind of sprung you, right? It was nice. Yeah, it was that, and then I was, uh, my match was with Leo at the same time, and then I met the guy Giancarlo, uh, who did all my videos. Mm-hmm. I knew him before, years before, but... We kind of really were just like, let's go for it now. And uh, I was doing vignettes before there was vignettes mm-hmm. on the Indies. That it was at that time, it was shitty fucking in your car, right? Selfie cell phone, yeah. Promos. Well, I would, you know, I would do, I would do promos making fun of promos. Yeah, like, that oh, was yeah, my yeah, promo. yeah, that was your deal on YouTube, right? Because it was. It's just like it was so tacky to be like. In a car, like, oh, I'm going to kill you. It's like, you're a nerd in a car. What do you, what do you, yeah. <laughs> this isn't real. <laughs> and then we came out with that. We did that, that uh, first vignette and we filmed it within like eight hours or so. And it was a hit. The boardwalk one, right? I think. Yeah. The or, one where I was coming back. In the streets almost. Yeah. I was lying. I always lie to the fans when I get, when I get hurt and say, I'm going to be back. Oh, guys. Doctors say two years, guys. Two years. And then I come back in two months. Right. They think I'm Classic Cena, we Yeah, yeah, <laughs> superhuman. <laughs> so I came back in like three months from that, and we did the video and uh, the hype up me and Leo in the ladder match. I think that was like the best uh, buy rate for a CCW show on iPay-Per-View at that time mm-hmm. was that for that. So it worked. And then I saw, you know, you there there's a group and you know them there's a group of guys who are kind of the fly around indie guys yes right yeah. and then like all of a sudden you're now into that group that was it yeah do you as that's happening are are you living in it being like this is what i was working for like, yeah it took so long too for me it took a long time i think to get to that um on flights and stuff and at that at that time it was like in that group it was kind of like I think me and Riddle were probably on every show in the United States at the right. time. Um, our careers kind of paralleled each other. Uh, besides, I never did the MMA thing. Oh, I was going to say, probably the, the <laughs> amount of drugs that you had. Is probably, right? <laughs> that a tattoo. Yeah. But, uh, did, did you feel, now, did you feel the pressure of like doing 
Sabu style risks and stunts? I think I was fine, actually. I was like, I'm a lot more stressed about wrestling than uh, I was before now. Then I was just kind of carefree, fuck it, you know? Mm -hmm. I would, uh, you know, it was like, even back then, I was just like, all right, you can, I could party the night before, get hammered all night before getting on my flight the next day and feel fine and not sleep and then go do a show and kill it and not sleep for three days. Now I think I'm just old. I just can't do that anymore. But I was just carefree. I just didn't give a shit. What's the pressure that you feel now? You're on TV, of course. Yeah. And you have all these new... Yeah, but you can let it get to you or you can not let it get to you. I, I was letting it get to me plenty. A few months ago, I was, I felt like shit because I let all these people... I never really had that negative, like, everyone piling. And then Cornette, his guys just pile on, you know. Just, it's whatever. It's like, that's just part of everything. I just never dealt with it. But now I'm a lot more, like, carefree, I think. Now I'm just like, all right, fuck it, fuck these people. All right, you gotta, you gotta go with what gets you to the news. Yeah, I even, I'm the only guy to go back at it with these fucking people. They say, oh, <laughs> leave them alone, leave, don't feed the trolls. No, fuck that. No, you and Joey Ryan are that's it battling with your armor on. Yeah, I, I, I now I got to, uh, now I'm at a point where I actually get to Cornette, and uh, <laughs> he's blocked me three times. So he so that makes that means he's unblocked you twice. He's unblocked me twice to talk shit to me. Okay, and I pissed him off so much a couple of weeks ago. He just had it because uh, on my uh, little Instagram live, I said to him, I said, uh, I said to somebody, I said, oh yeah, me and Jim Cornette, that's a work. We uh, we were at Chili's a couple of weeks ago <laughs> eating, and then. Someone asked him if that was true, and he says, if I had an option to get coronavirus or meet Jelly Nutella, I would rather get the coronavirus or something like that. Right. And I was like, no, Jim, that's not the case. Don't lie. We were at Chili's. We were eating Southwestern egg rolls, drinking margaritas. <laughs> then Chili's got involved, telling him not to lie and say that we were having a great time yeah. at Chili's. Then the dirt sheets picked it up, saying Joey Janela and Jim Cornette had a great time at Chili's. And then Chili's was harassing Jim Cornette, saying, <laughs> your friend Joey sent you a free margarita. Check your inbox. He just had it and blocked me. So, uh, did you? I'd imagine as a kid you probably thought he was the best, right? Uh, he was actually at the first indie show I ever went to in my life. Uh, that night it was him. Uh, did he ask you to go get you a Diet Pepsi? No, no, no. no. <laughs> he wasn't his night. I wasn't really a cornet guy. Okay. Maybe I was born a little bit earlier. I wasn't... I kind of just thought he was a dweeb yeah. in the Attitude Era, you know? Uh, what do, What do your parents... Or what does your mom think of you? Of this? Oh, well, she's proud now, for sure. Yeah. She wasn't for years, but she's proud now. And uh, she went to... She uh, went to pick up a pizza the other day, and... Uh, they saw and, her name? Yeah, they saw her name, and because Are you any relations to Joey Genoa? And then she's like, yeah, that's my son. He actually lives down the street still in my house. Thanks, Mom. But, yeah, so, the, yeah, she's feeling a little bit, like, also famous mom vibes. Uh, so you just said it, so I, I wouldn't have brought anything up. But uh, living with your mom. That's it. <laughs> that's life. I, very, I guess a very Jersey thing, if right? Like, it's almost normal? Yeah. It's just like uh, I'm saving up now. I'm gonna. I have enough to throw down on a house now. So, but, but why, it's coronavirus. So why not just keep collecting, huh? Yeah, why not? I don't pay for shit. Right. I don't even know what I pay for at this point. I don't know what bills I have. I'm thirty thousand dollars of debt, probably, or some shit. You just said you have the money for a house. Yeah. F- fuck the debt. We'll handle <laughs> that later. What's the debt from? Just like credit cards and like hospital bills and oh God and Easy Pass tolls. I never. I just got an Easy Pass recently. I just uh, you were gliding you know, Massachusetts through. just gliding through uh, uh, toll. They all stacked up. And no now, care in the world, and they double and then they triple, right? Uh, now I'm fucked, but I'm gonna I'm gonna handle that all. But <laughs> first, I need the house to get out of my mom's house. Okay, first you need a lawyer, I think, to handle this stuff. Yeah, I think so. Maybe comrade can help me. That so, well, handle. someone. Well, there's people who can, like, take your debt and then, like, barter it and be like, he'll give you four grand right now if you wipe it clean. Yeah. So reach out to Joey and help him out, would you? I'm try- yeah, I'm trying to consolidate everything into one. Right. And I'll just pay it off. Right, with some AEW tickets and some merch. Maybe- That's it. That's it. <laughs> Maybe the, the, state, the state of New Jersey and Massachusetts. I will- still, I'm just, like, fucked. Like, mom's like, why don't you just pay this fucking debt off? Yeah. No, I don't feel like You're it. a bad boy. That's it. I don't You're feel like You're a degenerate. Like it. That's it. I don't feel like it. I still have no door in my room. I smashed. I my friend speared me through the door in my room in like eighth grade, and I still never put one up. So what do you have? A, 
It's just uh, open a space. Curtain? No, there's nothing. It's what just there. Your, what about when you're wanking? Oh, I just pick opportune times to wank. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll Do make your, sure. Does your brother or sister live at home? My brother's still over there. Okay. He's got a door out of his room, so I, don't, I can't see him he, wanking. He's yeah. better than you. Yeah, if I hear his door open, I fucking hide. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, and then, like, where where are some places? You've you traveled, too. I mean, I know we're in, we're in a time of not really traveling that much, but... Yeah. Uh, that, that's got again. Is that kind of the same idea of like being able to go over to England and uh, and all these places? We went to Alaska together. Alaska, just, just on someone else's dime, right? Yeah. Um, did, you, did you as a kid? Did you think you would travel around, see the world a little bit? I didn't think like this. You don't really know like how it's going to be until it happens. I was on a streak for a while. I was going from uh, Germany to. Australia, going to England, like, and coming to the States and doing, like, a, a loop of the weirdest loop ever, like, doing a show in Vegas and doing a show in Chicago then doing a show in Boston, and mm. just, like, all in a row, and I, I don't think I ever slept at that time, and, uh, you know, I think it just, when you get into that mind frame, you're just, like, you know, this is, a, you're going to work, you know, uh, just, uh, just wild, you just, you know, your brain works a different way, uh, but, yeah, it's, it's fun, I got the Go a lot of places. We were supposed to be in Alaska the last week, right? Know, that's depressing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we we're supposed to be in a lot of places in the last couple, whatever. But. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was supposed to be in England last month and uh, Australia next month. What about some of the friends you've made? Some of the weird friends, the Virgils of the world, the Genetis of the world, um, the Teddies, <laughs> the Teddies of the world. Uh, it's weird. <laughs> just weird. You just, but you. I just like it. Yeah, it's like you gotta. Uh, this is great stories out mm-hmm. of it. Almost like you and you embrace the the whack the stern whack pack. Of, yeah, yeah. Right. I'll have a good book if I make it that far. You <laughs> know, I've got I've a lot of good stories. And you some of these guys are just bizarre. Five dollar wrestling legend. That's it. Yes. That's the reason I want to be at five dollar wrestling. All right. It's Jeff Hart, man. And it's like I want to hang out with this fucking guy. Who was supposed to be on Spring Break this year? Fry Train, Jeff Hart. Ready to rock for some reason. Did and, you have a big? Did you have a big? Uh, you were gonna make another star this year. I don't even know. I, I we had a couple. Uh, we had a couple guys in mind that we wanted to use, but the show was just so s- stacked. Like we can't have like an eight hour show. Mm-hmm. When, when it does happen, we'll probably now have an eight hour show, but. I mean, we had a couple guys in mind. I did a match, and I told you, and we'll get on there, is that I did a match, you know, with Greg Valentine, and and I he wanted to chop this kid so hard. Well, he wanted to beat up David Arquette so bad, and then he took it out on this other kid that was in the match because David Arquette tagged and got out of there. Uh-huh. And you could just see like a lot of rage in in Greg Valentine. Dude, you see a lot of rage in him every time you see him. He's yeah, but he's usually sleepy at the table. <laughs> but I never seen so much rage for wanting to beat somebody up. Where I was like, I think Joey can channel. Greg Valentine into, uh, into something. I don't know. Uh, what's his name was pretty bad like that. Uh, Bill Dundee. Okay. Uh, I was pretty- supposed to wrestle Bill Dundee at a GCW show. Mm-hmm. We do this fake show called Wombat. It's like a fake, like a, uh, it's like a uh, fake backstory that a visible man had this promotion in Memphis in the late eighties, early nineties called Wombat that, uh, that it's just another show we do when we go to Nashville. We do our Nashville show Sunday. We do Wombat now. Okay. On Saturday, which is just basically, it's not, it's essentially $5 wrestling with a lot more of a kind of a rhythm to it. But it's like, a, uh, Dun- it? Dundee was in on it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dundee was on our first one and I uh, was supposed to wrestle him. But the week before, I wrestled uh, Loki and Loki knocked me into oblivion. Because I, I think for a while, uh, he's hated my. He's he's like I've been on his target he hates list. Everybody, but he gave me a he gave me a kick to the jaw and sent me into the fencing position. When your arms shoot up, oh okay, yeah, he knocked me and he thought he had me out cold. But uh, I fought back after that. I didn't remember the whole match. He got guided me through it, but he definitely knocked me into oblivion. So I took a few weeks off, and I canceled the match with Dundee, but. Leading up to the match before that, people were telling me that Dundee had a, he was bringing a knife with him. He was going to put it in his boot. And if I tried anything, he was going to stab me to death in the ring because a bunch of Cornet fans told him that I was reckless and a backyarder and I was going to try to hurt him in the ring. (laughs) 
So people were telling me that we're in saying Dundee said he's going to stab you to death in Good the ring Lord. if you try anything. Good Lord. So it's not that's not the reason I pulled out of the match. Right. The reason I got excited concussion from Loki, but uh, Tony Deppin ended up wrestling him. But Dundee, he was and trying did to. Did he murder Tony Deppin? He gave Tony he Tony Deppin said he rocked him with the right at one point. But uh yeah, that we did I did a promo with Dundee earlier that and he was uh Yeah, he's really going for it, man. He was like he really wanted to fight me for some reason. I don't know why. But little does he know that you you pro- you have so much respect for him, I assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a <laughs> fucking wild man, but Right. Just uh I don't know. He's, have, did you guys did GCW ever try to reach out to Jamie Dundee? I think he figured he'd be the perfect person. I think we've you. tried. Oh, is, he we hi- definitely, is he back to hiding? I think he may be in hiding. That's like... One of my favorite guests on this show, Jamie Dundee. Really? Just a, a legend. I think that's Brett Lauderdale's... Uh, he's the promoter of GCW. For those that are listening, they don't know. he That's probably one of his favorites of all time. Jamie Dundee. Yeah. So we I, we definitely tried before. I don't know what happened. Mm, I'll, we'll have to get him out once this all calms down. That's it. We need a, we need a PG thirteen reunion. <laughs> yes, for sure. I was asking Tez about PG thirteen just the other day. Yeah, uh, uh, what's his name was doing pretty good, and then I think he became a meth head or something. I, uh, well, allegedly, we don't. We don't <laughs> no know. one knows. We I don't know. know. <laughs> this is what I just read on the internet, guys. Right. Uh, okay, and then lastly, is there like um, are, is there bigger and badder stunts that you're looking to pull out on AEW, or do you think you and Kenny got it out of your system, or is there just shit, shit that you like? That you have in mind that you you're waiting for the right opportunity. I think those days are kind of over. The, that's the, the reckless abandon, crazy stunts. Okay. There always be like the latter, the the match I had with uh, Moxley and the elbow. Or off the, I said Moxley. Did you do it with Kenny too? Yeah, the Kenny right. one was crazy too. Yeah, but the Moxley one had the big elbow drop off the ladder and the tax to the bare feet and all the craziness. Uh, there will always be times for me to do that and bust that out, but you know my body's shot. I've been doing this for like. I don't even know. I think this might be we're closing in on fifteen in August, so I'm so just you, shot out. You don't like new Jack, like like new Jack does. You don't look around being like, what can I dive off of today? Sometimes <laughs> a couple we uh, at an AEW show. I think it, we were. I was wrestling Kip. I wanted to do uh, an elbow drop off uh, like one of the um, what do they call that? Like the entrance ways. Mm-hmm. You know, like Jeff Hardy did at the Garden the Swanton. Mm-hmm. It's like off one of those. And, uh, Atlanta until the building said no. The building said no. The building said no. Everyone was on board. Yeah. It was pretty high, but uh, I was like, oh, let's do it. That's when I showed up. I was like, oh, I want to jump off that. But the building said no, so. Sons of bitches. And maybe it was for the better. Maybe for the better. Yeah, maybe. All right, Joey. Uh, anything else we're missing? Uh, I don't know. Hmm? I'm trying to think. It's been a good run. Yeah, you're in a good place, I think. Yeah, I think I think I'm in a better place now. My back was fucked up a few months ago, so and I was drinking a lot, and I was I was down on myself, and now I think I'm pretty good. Good, We're coming back. The bad boy is back. I love it. Thanks, bud. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. Joey Janela is on Twitter at Janela Baby. He's on Instagram at the Bad Boy Joey Janela. Joey's also a huge part of Game Changer Wrestling, which took part in a huge three day event called The Collective. Watch all of that on replay now, including Joey Janela's 2020 Spring Break on the Fight TV app. And if you are in Los Angeles this weekend, go see a socially distanced wrestling show with Joey and the GCW crew. Tickets are on the GCW Twitter at GC Wrestling underscore. All right, we are winding down the show for this week. So good to have a podcast on for you. Before we leave, I'd love to tell you some of my plugs and upcoming events. All right, all the past archives are ad-free at patreon.com slash Colt Cabana. For a dollar more, you can also get full Instagram Live call-in shows. Never before seen Colt Cabana content, Let's Watch Wrestling, Art of Wrestling Live video, and so much more. Twitch.tv slash Colt Cabana. I'm on there all the time. I just got Jackbox Party Pack 7. Come play with me. Grab some merch, coltmerch.com, digitalcult.com, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at Colt Cabana, Colt Wrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. That's where you can hit me up for shows, conventions, or any business or non-business stuff, or you can send something fun to my P.O. box, which can be found at the bottom of my website, coltcabana.com. Upcoming events, safe tickets are being sold for all AEW events in Jacksonville, Florida. Make a trip. 
Come on down, alleliterestling.com. Intro music by the Ukulele Teacher on YouTube. Outro music by Super Fun Yeah Yeah Rocket Ship. Podcast cover art designed by Jimmy Lee. Photo by James Musselwhite. Thank you to our sponsors, eatright.life, bluechew.com, mybookie, and of course, onehourtees.com, who help run prowrestlingtees.com. That's where you can buy all of my t shirts. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Cole Cabana. And thank you to my Patreons over at the $10 tier. Hold the line, Harry, Sasha, Jade, Logan, Lee, Brian, Joseph, Jocelyn, Maureen, Aaron, Molly, Stacy, Kim, Ernie, Jeremy, Adam, Amanda, Jim, Caleb, Tristan, Josh, Tabitha, Jay, Ismail, Tam, Jesse, Mary-Kate, James, Matt, Samuel, Michael, Fred, Nash, Gut Pocket, Stephen, Vicken, Anthony, Nick, Arlen, Dean, Dave, David, Joey, Jimmy James, John, Tom, David, Jeff, Johnny Font, Cody, Nicholas, Chris, Nigel, Matt, Adam, Tom, Sammy, Juan, the Ska Man, Ed, Justin, Rudy, Joey Mills, Caleb, Maria, Aaron, Victor, Christine, Murag, and Scott, don't call me Brody Lee. Always appreciate that support on my Patreon. It helps, I don't know, keep me alive. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, We'll be back in two weeks. We are at the halfway point. I've got three more great episodes to give you. You can listen to them now, right now, if you want, on Patreon, or just wait for your podcast feed. I'll see you in two weeks. This has been The Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks.